Three, two, one, go live. Hi, everyone. I have been reading quite a few posts recently about long haul boring for making lamps. Um, apparently, the Atmosphere tool is out of stock, which combined with the post made me go and have a look, and they want 78 quid for that. Many years ago, with my camera, I made my own. And it's quite simple. I'm just going to show you how I jigged it and how I got it made. So that's what we're going to make. Put it over there for now. I'll switch you to the tool rest. I've got Mark um, double shifting and earworming for me after just finishing for Keith. So he's in the background. Who'd like to say hi, Mark? Hello, everybody. Again. There he is. <laughs> okay, so first of all, you need a piece of wood that is about the length of your drill bit. This is an eight mil drill bit I'm using. And you'll see why in a minute. Bung that in your chuck. Here on your costs, on your uh, tools, your lathe, you have to factor all of that in, multiplied by three. So whatever it costs you to make, then times that by three, that's the price you should sell it for. If it seems like a ridiculous price, drop it a bit. Hello, Pete. Hello. Did I just have you on the screen all the time then? Yes. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, it went wrong at this end. Okay. Um, Whilst uh, you were on the screen talking. <laughs> um, right, I'm going to go back and pretend to do this, what I've just done. Um, <laughs> Take me off screen. Right. Uh, they don't you should have see me, me on screen. Is that right? You are. Excellent. Sorry, you I lost just, all audio. I lost the whole lot. You were just putting that small piece of wood in the O'Donnell chores. Okay, so you saw that bit. Okay, so I took, um, where the hell am I? I took an 8 mil drill and went all the way through it. I've now okay. got a 10 mil drill in the Jacobs, which is marked up with a bit of tape to go halfway through. So I'm following the same hole to halfway. Don't be quite so careful here because I've already got an 8mm hole through there. But this is going to go straight no matter what. Now, if the magic works, I should be able to switch over to my bandsaw now. And have yep. a nice close up view. Right, I can't see the screen anymore. Am I on camera with a piece of wood? Yep, perfect. Dead center. Excellent. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to cut straight down the middle. Hodgepodge says that he's going to be setting up some webcams laptop etc in the shop likely this week while watching virtually crafty on saturday if you uh need any help or assistance hodge just give me a shout mate glad to help right i can't see what you can see but hopefully you can now see i've got the piece of wood cut down through and you've got the eight mil hole here ten mil hole here See that perfectly. Right, so line it up on that roughly and cut one piece through there. Through 
throw your clamp on the floor. So you've got your 10 mil and the other half of the 10 mil. Put a clamp on it. Probably not a plastic clamp, but these were handy. Now I used threaded bar because I happen to have some. I've still got some, so I'm going to show it, use it to show this as well. Put that in the other side on the 8 mil. Clamp that. Can you see that clearly? Probably better that way around. Yep, see that. So that's your jig. Um, metal yeah. clamps would be ideal. You then take that to your garage or anybody who's got a welding plant and knows how to use it. When they weld that, obviously it's going to burn the wood away, but it doesn't matter because you only need this once. All you need is those two to be central. So we're going to go back over to the lathe now. So what you've essentially made there is a welding jig. Yep, it's a welding jig. Perfect. So we go back over here. And you'll see that that's exactly what I've got here. 10 mil bit into an 8 mil bar. It does need to be slightly smaller bar than bit. Um, so you've got room to grind your weld off and not have a lump there. Now I've put a T-handle on mine. You don't need to do that, but I just welded another piece across and stuck some wood on it. Um, but up to you whether you do that bit or not. Go back to the tool rest. Now I don't actually want to make a lamp. So this is just a piece of log. If you were making a lamp, You get your lamp in the in the chuck. You start with a Jacob's chuck and a 10 mil bit just to get it started. Then you knock your speed down. Three hundred and eighty there. That's plenty enough. You basically, just feed it into the hole you started with the Jacobs, and go in. A little bit of pressure. Clear it regular. It's most important to clear it regular. Otherwise, it will start to drift. It's a bit too slow, actually. Five hundred. You can tell by the sound the drill bit makes as it goes in. Now the Aspinster long hole boring kit is 78 pounds. I made this from a drill bit, a piece of threaded bar which I had knocking around. And I actually gave the guy who welded it a pen for doing it. So, what's that, 15, 20 quid's worth? And since I made it, I have made a lot of lamps. Lamps don't make much profit in my view because in the UK in particular, you've got to be so careful with pap testing. And um, I always use brass fittings. Because I figure if you're going to spend all that money and time and effort making a nice wooden lamp, why the hell would you put plastic on it? Shall I just uh, quickly tell you everybody that's in? Yes, please, Mark. We've got Douglas Mungham, Klondike Crossman, Hi, Hi. John N. Tommy's Workshop, Hodgepodge, Andy Heath, Robert Dahlman, Richard RJK Spinning Wood, uh, TJ Turning, Ian Leonard, 
I love work turning. Apparently that's Adam. Brian at Hartwood turning. And Douglas Mungham, Andy Heath, Gav Sadei Woodwork. Circular Wood by Keith. Hi, Keith. Hi, Keith. Cameron um, Dolman, Robert Lapsley, Douglas Mungham. I think I might have said a couple of people twice, but. That's good. Some people need to be said twice. On a safety issue, you are putting a bit of pressure on this. So, know roughly how far you need to go so you know when to release it and go gently. Steve um, Jobbins, you don't want to end up going right through and end up punching the end of your blank, which would be nasty. What was the tree by Colin? How could I miss you? Sorry, it's because you went first. He wasn't in first, was he? No. <laughs> As I said in my live the other night, disappointed. He's let himself down. He's let us all down again. <clears throat> my journey decides that at 10 past two I was going to do this. So. <laughs> I love what Tony says. My long borer goes through the tailstock. Assume this is just another method. Yeah, this one used to go through the tailstock um, on my old lathe. Um, it doesn't go through the tailstock on this lathe. Right, I'm actually through there. Uh, Circular Wood by Keith says, Pete, apparently pad testing is no longer a requirement, but many companies will still relieve you of cash. It's no longer a requirement. However, trading standards will give you trouble if you have more than five lamps on your stool. So sell four, they'll just walk past. If you've got more than five, or give you grief. As you can see, if I had a piece of cable, I've got a hole all the way through. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's pretty much a free piece of kit that anybody can make if you know somebody who can do some welding. And your local garage, they've got welding kit. This is not, an, it's not a major bit of welding. Um, I ground that off myself on my sharpening system. Back on camera. So very, very easy. Just going to flip back over to the tool rest, uh, band tool rather. Another quick look at the jig. That's a very clever idea. I like that. Literally, you're, you're taking a piece of wood, putting a, the right size holes for each piece of bar, and then cutting that into a jig. It will catch fire when they're weld, but it doesn't matter because once it's caught, it's caught. Very cool. Any questions? Uh, no. Cool. Well, that's the end of my life. It was a very short one. Cool. I can go make Thanks some Christmas Bob. trees now. <laughs> yeah, go make some Christmas trees, Mark. I mean, <laughs> don't you're messing about. I did 50 yesterday. And that was a bad I've day. I've only got five to make. I'm hoping, I, well, no, I'm kind of hoping I've reached the end of them, um, but who knows. But uh, the snowman video I did the other day, I had an order from the video for one of those. I didn't intend to make two of those. Binky? I yeah. don't I really liked Binky. I, I like Binky as well, but um, it's, um, it's what I call a dustum. It's um, a large ornament thing that um, you put somewhere, it gets covered in dust, and you think, what am I going to do with that then? Dust it. Dust magnet. 
thank you for coming in, Mark, and thank you for everybody else who came in to have a quick look. Right. It's, um, as I said, it's a very simple idea. I did it a long time ago, and I've made lots and lots of lamps with it. It is a bit blunt now, but it's a standard drill bit. You can sharpen it. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm conscious, Brian. My uh, my bandsaw is the safest saw I've got. I can get my fingernails within very close to that blade and not, not have a problem. Who's Michelle Ravenscroft? That's my daughter, uh, possibly. My granddaughter. She says, mind your fingers on the big soles, please. But, um, no. No, I've got to count them. They're all there. Um, <laughs> yeah, is that your, your sofa watching, Michelle? Anyway, that's it. I'm going to press the blooming button. Thanks for dropping by. And this was made because I saw lots of people saying they couldn't get hold of the um, Axminster tool. And when I looked at the price of that at £78, I thought, ouch. Right, Mark, you're coming back on for it briefly. Oh, OK. Throw me clothes back on. No, you're not. You're not going to come back on because that one isn't a touchscreen. Sorry. Now you are. <laughs> I get confused so easily. Right. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.